The purpose of this video is to integrate the natural exponential function. And since it's been a long time since we've actually differentiated the natural exponential, it might be helpful if we did two review problems of differentiating. And just real quickly over here off to the side, if we have an exponential, natural exponential function where the exponent is a little more complicated than x, the derivative, you might remember, is going to be itself, the function, times the derivative with respect to x of the exponent. So e to the u times u prime. So let's apply that formula for differentiation over here for these two review problems. Okay, For this particular problem right here that I've written, okay, what I did was I rewrote the square root as a rational exponent. So this is easier to work with when you differentiate. So let's go to the derivative. 3 is our constant multiplier. So the derivative here is just itself. I'll probably go ahead and put it back in the square root notation. So times the derivative with respect to x of x to the 1 half power. So the derivative of the exponent. So we have a little more work to do by using the power rule. And probably a little cleanup. All right, so 3e to the square root of x times, it might be helpful to use parentheses here, 1 half x to the negative 1 half using the chain rule on this composite function. A mm, little cleanup here. I'll probably create a fraction. I'll leave the 3 on top. The 2 goes on the bottom. e to the square root of x can stay on top. And square root of x resulting from x to the negative 1 half would go in the denominator. All right, let's look at our second example here. I've identified it as a natural exponential function. I'm going to apply the chain rule to e to the u. So the derivative is itself times the derivative of the exponent. If you're comfortable doing this all in one step and avoiding this step, that's fine. But it's always nice to kind of have some structure to fall back on in case you have a complicated problem. All right, this derivative is negative 2x. I will put that in front and in its own parentheses times e to the negative x squared plus 6. You could put this in parentheses if you wanted to. It's not necessary, um, but and it's probably not necessary even to have parentheses here. Um, that just looks nice. All right, as mentioned earlier, the purpose of this video is to integrate the ex exponential function. So I, like I said, I thought it'd be helpful to do a couple of review problems to put our mind back around that function. All right, so let me give you the two rules that are necessary for integrating natural exponential functions. All right, here are our two rules that we're going to use for uh, integrating uh, a natural exponential function. As you can imagine, we're likely going to be using this um, rule formula, if you will, more than this one over here because this formula only applies to one function, the parent function e to the x. Most of the functions that we're going to be dealing with are going to be a composite natural exponential function with a more complicated exponent. So this will likely be the formula we're going to use. All right. Um, when you're integrating and you identify a natural exponential function as part of the integrand, this is one approach to the problem. I'm not saying that every time you see a, an e in your integrand that this is going to be the formula you're going to use. It's certainly an option. All right. For these examples, it will be. All right. So let's look at some examples I had to use this rule. Alright, consider this integral. If this is what we're working with and we're asked to find, okay, well, what do we differentiate to get this derivative? You know, I know it's not a reverse power rule because I don't have a base of x with a numeric exponent. So I have to begin to think, okay, what have I learned? What are some other options? And when you see e, you need to just think about, well, this is one option to use, this rule. And I can use this formula if I can take this um, integrand and rewrite it as a u integrand by using u substitution. All right, so let's go ahead and try that approach. All right, that would mean that I would allow u to be, I mean, you know, just thinking about what would be my options, u would be the exponent. That's what this means, okay? du is 3 dx. Okay, I see that I have a dx, which is part of the du, but I don't have a 3, but that's not a problem. We've seen with u substitution that I can bring in the constant multiplier 
and counter it with a one third. All right, rewriting. I can make this whole integrand look like this formula. So e to the u, that's what's accounted for here, and then 3dx would be your du. All right, and to save a little bit of space, I'm going to work to the right here. All right, so we've got one third. We can drop the integral symbol. It disappears because we perform the calculations. Um, e to the u is going to go back to um, e to the u. So you can put e to the u here if you wanted to, or you can combine a step and know that u is going to be replaced with 3x plus 1 to get back to a, uh, an answer with x in it. Okay, you can leave your answer like this, or you can stack it as a fraction with this uh, function being on top of the fraction here. Okay, take a look at example two. Again, like I said, you know, one of the options is if you see E, you might want to think about with U substitution, could I make the um, integrand look exactly like this, which if I did, I would get back to um, the function E to the U plus C. So if that's the case, if I'm going to try that approach, then I guess I would have to let U be my exponent. And will that work? Meaning is the derivative of U going to produce a factor, a variable factor that's all already there. It sure does. I have the x part of it, so I have x and dx, x and dx here. I don't want this 5, I want a negative 2. So I'm going to come back to the problem and I'm going to go, you know what, that 5 is not working for me. Let me pull it out. I'm also going to take this opportunity to rearrange and put the x near the dx. Just a better visual of what needs to take place. Okay, then I'm going to recognize that I have e to the u and the x dx part, x dx, but I need to bring in a negative 2 and take out a negative 1 half. So negative 1 half. Let's convert. Don't try and rush it. Okay, we want to see all steps. e to the u, u, and then du. Working to the right, negative 5 halves. Okay. This simply goes back to itself, so e to the u, but I will take care of that step here as well and get that answer. Okay, example three, uh, a couple things going on. We have a fraction. We have a natural exponential function. Uh, I am going to think about the e to the u route, but you might want to first of all rewrite this, bring up x squared. If I am going to proceed with the e to the u log or e to the u uh, integral rule, then u would have to be one over x. So let's see what happens if I allow that to take place. So u would be one over x, which is simply x to the negative one, and the derivative using the power rule uh, would have us uh, get negative one x to the negative two dx which that's kind of convenient because this whole part right here is actually what we need. We just need to bring in a negative one. So I think that's the route I'm going to go. So let's go ahead and bring in a negative here, multiply by a negative out here, and convert all over. So I'm going to have negative integral e to the u, and then the negative here gets replaced with du. So negative, I'm ready for integration e to the u, u was x to the negative 1, or you can simply write it as 1 over x. Alright, for um, example 4, notice that we've gone from an indefinite integral to a definite integral. Uh, you know, that just means we have limits now. We don't need the plus c. We're going to actually evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus and get a numeric answer. All right, but we still proceed the same way. We have to find an antiderivative. So we might want to think about u substitution. 
u would be our exponent. So it looks like we just need to bring in a negative and also multiply by a negative on the outside here. All right. So I'm going to convert here. I still have my limits. This is e to the u. And then this is going to be du. I promise there was a negative there. I think things are just disappearing. All right, let's look at the process again. We, uh, Yep, they're disappearing. We have negative. We're ready to integrate. So we're going to have e to the u. And u was simply negative x. Okay, this is a good place when you're not going to do plus c. This is a good place to take advantage of the closing bracket. And uh, let that be your uh, place where you're going to store your limits. So we're done with the integral symbol, but you know we don't want to really lose our limits, so we've got them right here. All right. So now um, let's just evaluate. So I've got the negative. Okay, and just evaluate the antiderivative at one and zero. So e to the negative one minus e to the zero. You're finished, just done, but we do want to still clean up. So we're going to have negative. I'm going to have one over e. You can certainly leave it as e to the negative 1, your choice. Uh, otherwise, 1 over e minus 1. You're done. You could distribute the negative. Uh, that would also be positive 1. If I distributed the negative and rearranged, I'd have 1 minus 1 over e. I've even seen uh, where they've got a common denominator and changed one whole to e over e and then combined into a single fraction different options. I think if you took it to this point right here, you're good. Not getting a common denominator is fine, but I think I'd probably at least take it to this point. All right, taking a look at example five, we're going to proceed. We're going to use FTC and find the numeric answer. All right, so our first step is to find an antiderivative. And this one's kind of interesting. If you let u be e to the x, then the derivative would be e to the x itself down here. So you'd have u over 1 minus u, uh, du. I, I don't have a formula. I've never seen e to, the u, or e to the u over 1 minus e to the u. So probably allowing u to be just e to the x isn't going to work for you. Uh, maybe perhaps first we should rewrite this, bring the denominator up. If I did that, I'd probably use some parentheses here. So um, I can't do any algebra. Remember, we're not dividing by a monomial one term. So I can't break this apart. But what I could do is bring up the whole denominator. And maybe this is a better view for you um, to see how to proceed. I'm actually going to rearrange now. I'm trying to conserve some space here. I'm running out of paper. I actually see now what needs to take place. If u is this inside function, observe that when you differentiate, this derivative is 0. So you're actually just left with uh, negative e to the x itself with a dx. So that's good, because I have e to the x dx. I just need to bring in a negative and multiply by a negative on the outside. So I've got the negative integral 0 to 1. This will become u to the negative 1, and then all of this will be replaced with du. So it's actually in this notes. It's not going to be an exponential, natural exponential rule. Notice what we have here. Can't do the reverse power rule. We'd be dividing by 0, so this must be the natural log rule. So it's negative ln. We're focusing on what is the antiderivative here. ln absolute value of u which is 1 minus e to the x. We don't need the plus c, but we will use this uh, absolute value bar uh, to store our limits. Not finished. Let's evaluate. Um, I'm going to pull the negative outside. That way I'll just evaluate at my limits uh, the natural log function. So the natural log absolute value 1 minus e to the 1 minus natural log, absolute value, 1 minus e to the 0. All right. 
<laughs> and then to continue these calculations, we do have a little cleanup right here. Okay, let's do what we can, and then I want to stop you because I see something that's going to take place in this problem that wasn't anticipated. Um, I have a natural log absolute value 1 minus e. There's a minus in here. I can't do anything further with that. Minus natural log absolute value 1 minus anything to the 0 is 1. Okay, and then I am out of paper here, but let me talk to you about this tomorrow. The next time I see you guys, um, this is the natural log of zero, which doesn't exist. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background about this problem at that point, but you've really accomplished the goal of integrating, and then I wanted to take you to the point of evaluation FTC, and we got there, but I just noticed something um, was happening and occurring in this problem that we'll discuss in class together. So that's it.